I try to drive this car at least once a week or, or at least once a month. Uh, best case scenario, once a week. That, that doesn't happen a lot. And the problem with not driving a car a lot is it seems like things go wrong when they're sitting up because you're not noticing things. So with this car, I'm noticing a, uh, I gotta work on it. I got my scan tool hooked up to it right now. And and this is a, another reason why I don't repaint. Now when I got this car, the paint was, was good on it. It was awesome. I put 100,000 miles on it. And now, you know, it needs a bumper, it needs paint. And the hood needs to get unbent. I bought it with the hood like that. And that's how the hood, uh, the paint started flaking off the hood. It was just in a small spot. I could have caught it, but I just, ah, whatever. I ended up not addressing it when it was a small spot. And then it, it became a big, massive uh, spots. And that part up there, the clear coat came off. Car needs a paint job. So I already knew when the hood faded at the very top that I was just gonna paint the car anyway, eventually. But I don't believe in painting cars unless I have every confidence that all the other maintenance has been done. And with these, that includes like changing time and chains and stuff like that. So until I get like all the major maintenance and the car is like totally running right, I typically change all the suspension parts. I think I've already done the suspension on this, on this vehicle. Um, all the bushings, you know, yeah, I've done this one, yeah. All the ball joints, all the bushings, all the control arms, the shocks, the struts. I, I go through it and I, I replace everything um, on the car while it's, before I start putting cosmetic money into it. It's a nice car. It's a, a very sought after uh, model and it's fast. It's, it's a fast car. Got a lot of speed tickets in this car. But uh, today, I'm having an issue with it running hot, which I believe something has to be loose somewhere where a little bit, some air is getting into it or it's leaking coolant because the bottle was uh, pretty much empty when I checked it uh, earlier. I saw that the temperature is rising on it and then I uh, brought it back home, parked it for a few hours, came back. It wasn't much in the bottle at all. And then I also noticed when I did the coolant change on this one a few months ago or so, that I believe it's stemming from the uh, the fans. The electric fans are not coming on when they should based on the temperature. And, I, and the scan tool is good when it comes to that. I use this bi-directional scan tool right here. And uh, as you can see, the engine has no faults. So that's not gonna, that's not helping me. So I have replaced the radiator on this car. And I also have uh, replaced the thermostat housing thermostat. I'll probably end up going through changing. First, I'll deal with the fan because I already know, and I'll use a scan tool to, uh, to engage the fan and stuff. The fan is coming on way too late. So, I'm gonna be looking at the coolant temperature sensor. I'll be looking at things like that, the triggers for the fan, and then I'll be changing some things out. And while I'm at it, you know, preventative maintenance, after so many years and so many miles, certain things, like I said, the time and chain, um, the thermostat, hoses, clamps, things like that, I just change those out as a preventative maintenance measure. So. I'll be like going through this. I have to go through this car again before I get it painted. Cause I'm at the point to where I'm ready to go ahead and get it painted, but I'm not painting a car that is not 100% running perfectly. So I have 200, I have a little over 200,000 miles on this car. It's about time uh, for the time and chain to be done again on this. It, it's a it's a pretty good expense, but if you want to keep the car, I think on these you have to change the time and chain like every hundred thousand miles or something. I have to look up in the book to be sure, but around every hundred thousand miles, you got to change the time and chains on this. They they get slack. They make the guides out of plastic and stuff. They break, and you know you get a little chain rattle at startup, which I used to have on this car, but yeah. But anyway. Like I said, uh, 
So I put the scan tool on it because my uh, my RPMs are jumping around and the faults that I came back with, it doesn't have anything to do with that. So now, now you're back to old school troubleshooting uh, because the scan tool is not telling you anything. So, you know, it's acting uh, like a, like some of the old uh, Chryslers when the map sensor would be going bad, uh, you get an erratic, erratic uh, tachometer will be acting erratically and things like that. Thing with this one is, uh, even when the needle is jumping around, the uh, the engine doesn't seem to be stumbling or anything. So I'll be looking at the gauges. Maybe I do need to look at the stuff in the BCM because that would be a part of it. Uh, but on another note, this is like a three-year-old Altel and I never paid for the updates. This tool hadn't been updated in well over a year. Some people say that if you don't update them, they become a brick. Well, I, I hadn't noticed that. I have like three of these scanners and um, mine still works fine, you know? The only thing I can't do is when I need to connect to like uh, on the Chrysler vehicles and for certain things, when I need to connect to certain servers to get certain information, then uh, it doesn't work for that without the subscription. But for all your regular stuff up until the updates that you had it. So uh, I made sure right before it ran out that I updated it for like 2020, at the very end of 2021, I updated it so that I would have all the 2022 stuff in there. So uh, let's see. So in the BCM, it's nothing. Low pressure, low pressure, low pressure. And the vehicle speed sensor error. I have uh, replaced all of the sensors in this. This is a TPMS model. So I have replaced and uh, reprogrammed all the TPMS sensors in this. I'll be uh, trying to erase these because uh, this is from when I had uh, new tires put on and I replaced all the TPMS sensors. So that's the stuff for the BCM. I'll back out of that and I will erase those codes. Ignition on. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Okay. Let's back out of that. So in this instant, and the uh, the fault with the uh, intelligent key, it's like one of the antennas. So I, I know about that. Um, one of the antennas is not working properly. So my range is drastically reduced uh, with my uh, key fob. Uh, this time it's can communication. Let's, let's, uh, let's search it out 39 times. And this is basically, this is an Infiniti G35. It's the same as a 350Z. Um, it just has a back seat leather and some of the cushy options, the Bose system, things like that. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. So I'll, I'll look at that. I'll look at that later. The U1000 communications code. I, I already know that one of the antennas for the key code is not, uh, for the fob, it's not working uh, very well. And on the ABS, that's that's new. Let's see what's going on with that. None of this has anything to do with the vehicle running hot or the RPMs jumping around uh, on the way down. So normally I accelerate pretty hard in this car and uh, I've noticed the last couple of times I drove it um, that when it got to about when it gets to under 2000 RPMs, I would see the needle jumping on, on the deceleration. So that, uh, that's what I initially was gonna be working on on this car today. I get it over there under the, uh, the little carport where I keep all my tools. That's normally where I work on the cars at. But it's about to rain. So 
okay so battery voltage abnormal and that would be because like i said i'm lucky if i get to drive this car once a month um and the battery dies a lot so uh we'll uh we'll erase that abs oh, that's a weird one battery voltage on the abs i'll do a, a quick erase of everything So while well, that's erasing all of those, so I know for sure that the truck at the car is uh, running hot. At first I didn't think it was because uh, the temperature would come back down so quick. And But then I remembered about the fans, these electric fans. So I will be addressing these fans. These are the original fans. They've got 200,000 miles on them and I've already had to replace the radiators. So, you know, but I'm not gonna just change parts i have to make sure uh that i am getting the proper signal from the trigger for the fan which is uh like the coolant temperature sensor so i'll be using my bi-directional um scan tool to actuate these fan motors turn these fans on and off make sure they are responding to commands and then i'll be looking at on the live data i'll be looking at the temperatures and things like that so uh so just like before see now the bottle was like empty the car has sat here and cooled down a bit and now it's like my bottle is empty when it was running hot of course it was all the way up to here so i'll i'll put it back to the max again something's going on with it and i just have to troubleshoot this the old school way but i'll still have a little help from my scan tool um, with the uh, bi-directional controls. So, uh, let's see. I don't, let's see where that's gonna be at. Let's look at the engine to get some live data. I need to, I wanna see if the fans turn on. This baby's crawling today. This thing is normally fast, man. It is crawling right now. It's going real slow. Yeah, it never goes this slow. Um, active test. That's where I want to go. I want to look at um, engine coolant temperature. And I want to look at my coolant fan. So I'm gonna look at my coolant temperature sensor. That's exactly what I want. And uh, so something about the battery voltage. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I need to look at this too because when I went to fill up this car, uh, it said that pump was telling me it's full but it was showing like it was only halfway and I have had a problem in the past with that all right what else we have okay I'll look at those All right, engine speed, okay, nothing right now. Okay, so it says the coolant is right now, it's sitting at 199 degrees Fahrenheit. And I need to verify that against the gauge, against the uh, point at which the fan should, should turn on. So I'll be looking that up. So that's that's what I'm about to be doing. I'm gonna go real quick and uh, I wanna turn on my cooling fan. Before the rain comes. That's where these scan tools can be really helpful, even for a DIYer. Um, if, if, even if you don't do this professionally, uh, the bi-directional controls can help you out a whole lot um, 
because you could you could test some things. And you can kind of test through the uh, the wiring. And let's see, I'll turn it on low. And I heard the fan come on. Turn it on high. It is responding to the, uh, so I know the computer, I know the, the fan is talking to the computer and if it gets the right signals, it can turn on and off. It can go high and low, but I noticed in real operations that it wasn't doing that. Okay. Turn it off it went off so so what that has done for me uh guys and, and for the professional techs this they're like hey yeah we know all that but a lot of people that watch my channel are not professional technicians so you know just watch something else uh don't watch this one <laughs> somebody else might want to know this so uh so i took my uh my little alto it's a bi-directional control scanner so you can do things like that and so that saved me a lot of troubleshoot because as you saw when i scanned it it didn't have any codes relating to the problem that i'm having so now i have to do it another way and i know the fan works okay i, I just proved that the fan works i just proved that it has communication between the fan and the computer and i so i know the wiring is good so I know I don't have bad wiring, I don't have a bad fan, and I know my computer isn't bad. So when the fan is not running during normal operation, that would mean that it's not getting its trigger. And I know that the coolant temperature sensor has to send a message. Uh, it's, that input goes to the computer from that sensor. When it gets to a certain temperature, computer tells these fans to come on and based on the temperature low or high i know that the system is capable of doing that but it's not doing that uh, based on a previous when i like i said when i did the coolant change so now what i'm going to look at are the inputs from the coolant sensor like i'll run this thing in idle that's normally when it ran runs hot when it's sitting in idle for a while and i believe it's because the fans are not running because i just drove this thing like 40 miles and I didn't have any problem there and back. But when I was sitting at my mom's house, going in there to talk to my parents for about 10 or 15 minutes, and I left the car running, when I came back out, it was almost running hot. You know, the temperature was way above spec. So that's where I'm at. That's kind of like my process on doing this. And uh, I'll have to work on it probably another day. I'll do as much as I can before the rain comes. All right, so these tools these don't cost that much anymore um it was kind of expensive when i got it but not really for a scan tool i think it was like i can't really remember how much it cost maybe like i think it was less than two thousand dollars i think it was like maybe like sixteen hundred dollars or something but they're like half that price now so uh you can pick one of these up for like 600 bucks i think now maybe even less depending on where you get it from um i think i bought it from a place to where if i had problems with it i could get some support so that's something you got to think about when you buy these if you buy from a vendor to where you can get support then that's going to be you know beneficial for you if the thing bricks out or whatever but yeah like i said i hadn't had any problem with it i never paid for the updates and mine still works fine as you can see it's a good tool to have, and it helps cut a lot of time out of troubleshooting stuff on the car. Um, whether that's a window motor, the motors for those fans, or just your windshield wiper or anything like that that you can turn on and off with the control to see if you have good wiring, good motor, good communication to where you can kind of narrow it down. So that saved me a lot of time. All right. All right, guys. All right. I got the vehicle running now. Uh, key fob battery in combination with that antenna I was telling you about. That's why it takes a while for it to pick up the key. Nevertheless, you can see the temp on there. I'm gonna get some live data on this vehicle. 
uh, I believe the manual states that the engine coolant temperature should trigger the fan in low speed at 208 degrees Fahrenheit and high speed at 212. So I wanna look at the coolant temperature sensor And I want to also look at the, uh, let me escape. I want to go to live data, make sure I'm in live data and not by directional control. And I'm going to pop my hood again. And then, okay. As we're at 195 right now. That's active test. I want to get out of active test and I just want to go into live data. And uh, just want to go with main signals because I'm really only after, I'm only wanting to know about the fan and the coolant. See, I want my cooling fan and right now it's off and I want my uh, coolant temperature. I'll take battery voltage too. I'll take that temperature sensor. And then I wanna only look at those. So right now um, we're at, it's climbing 206 and I'll go ahead and pop the hood. And right now, as you can see, the fan is off. This is like a little, has like a little graph function uh, but I don't need that I just want to know if it comes on when it hits the, uh, the 208 or not okay I just heard it kick in so I just heard the fan kick in and it's on low speed of course I have refilled the cooler and I'm looking for some active leaks see if I'm losing my coolant somewhere and normally I just park this on the uh, on the concrete to find the leaks so my fan is on low my temperature is at 206 so it kicked in at about 206 my fans came on not running hot on the inside so everything looks good so far and uh, my fans just turned off my coolant temperature hit 203 the fans went off my voltage is good my fans are indeed off okay and I'll probably move this over I'll pack this up and move it over to the uh, concrete so I could see if anything is dripping because doing this in the grass is not going to help me. So I'll just pack everything up and put this in the, uh, in the vehicle. And many times with the scan tool, especially getting my live data and whatnot, I take these things on the road and put it under the regular conditions especially when I'm trying to find um, misfires and things like that. So let's put you right there. And if I need it to, I could take this thing on a, on a test drive. Probably should, I, I should go ahead and put my RPMs on there too, because uh, I wanted to see those spikes. One thing at a time, right now, I'll just get her on the uh, concrete so that I can look at the leaks, see if we got any leaks going on. And I'll back it up because the new concrete is nice and white and it shows up really well. All right. All right.
right, my fans are on low again. I can hear them. I'm gonna turn on my AC because normally I'm driving with my AC on while I'm doing all this. So I'm confident that my gauges work and that uh, I'm not physically looking at the, uh, the fan. Okay, it just kicked into high. So it, it went into high at 204.8, but that's around, I think that's irrelevant. I think it kicked into high fan because my AC is on and the compressor kicked in. So, so there's another dynamic of chasing down this as far as if I'm thinking the fans are not working. Um, I really should have the AC off because the AC trigger the fans to come on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the AC off. And I'll get ready to pop my hood. Okay, so my fans just went off, 203. Let me show all I want to get. I want to look at my uh, I want to get a couple of things. Uh, and I think the rain is coming. Yeah, I think the rain is coming. Yep, and here comes the rain. So that's gonna that's gonna kill me off. But before the rain messes up my stuff, I wanna see if, uh, if I'm leaking anything. Fans just kicked in. My fans seem to be working fine. My coolant temperature sensor seems to be working fine. I might just have a, a leak somewhere, like I said earlier, a little bit of air. These things run hot really quick. If any air gets in the systems, they are very sensitive to air. The bleeding process when you have to change the coolant is kind of ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I didn't see anything leaking. I'll back up. don't have any puddles and I'll just have to finish this later because the rain is coming but at 206 my fans look like they kicked in around 205 maybe 206 I'm gonna finish working on this car and I'll get at you later RV Tech Pro out